Hello. <laughs> I thought I was recording. <laughs> Welcome to Birds of a Feather. This is your girl, AJ, the Suburban Princess. Um, lots of thoughts. Um, my whole intro earlier was a little more organized than this now that I realized I wasn't recording. Um, it's 914, so I just felt like popping off some thoughts before I figure out what I, what I want to eat for dinner. But I wanted to pop off some thoughts tonight just because... There have been a lot of developments that happened that have got me a little more emotional than normal in the past week, um, Memorial Weekend. Um, even though it, nothing really popped off really incredible as far as I'm concerned. But what's really been going on has just been the violence that has more than usual, especially in Philly, has developed, um, especially after this past weekend. Um, there were a lot of events in town, and apparently there was a lot of popping of the guns going on, apparently, down the South Street area. And unfortunately, less than a handful of people lost their lives, and there are family members tonight in pain, knowing that they've lost family members who probably were innocently hanging around the city, um, looking for something fun to do, and got caught in the middle of whatever chaos erupted. Mass shootings have been developing a lot more at a faster rate in this course with social media and Skycam and all these things. Apparently over almost 250 mass shootings have happened this year alone, and it's only June. Um, I don't know if the sudden uh, attention to uh, gun control has heightened this definite need for mass shootings. I mean, obviously, there has been uh, a vigilant terrorist, uh, domestic terrorist attack that happened in Buffalo. And I'm sure um, what popped off in Uvalde, Texas was no different. I just feel that somewhere along the line, we have to go back to, unfortunately, why this is so... It's almost numbing, but then it's also desensitizing us, unfortunately, because it's been happening so much. I mean, right now, probably while I'm talking, there's something else going on somewhere. It carried on internationally. Uh, The town in Nigeria was just shut up and 50 people were killed in a church having service on a Sunday. And a lot of kids and adults lost their life, which is a sin. And the kids that lost their lives in Uvalde, that just could have been avoided altogether. I mean, this this young man who took these lives of these kids really was just a coward who couldn't control his emotions and was able to buy a gun as soon as he turned 18. And I think now it's gotten to the point where the enabling is becoming the poison that's allowing these things to happen. There are disgruntled people all over, you know, Tulsa, Oklahoma, a day or two later, a week or two later, shot up in a hospital. Then something else popped off in North Carolina over the weekend in a hospital. Um, I think a couple people passed away there. Um, You know, the devil is busy. I mean, the spiritual Christian side of myself always wants to believe that, you know, God is a just God. But I'm sure there are people who don't want to hear that tonight who don't have any faith that these things happen for a reason and and it's totally reasonably reasonable why i just only want to touch on it because the fact that there's over 250 people that have been involved in mass shootings really shouldn't be happening when we're supposed to have already moved past this issue because if it would just not be such a dependent um subject of assault rifles being banned and there wasn't such politics and money making strategies that were in the way of getting that done and people actually cared about complete strangers losing their children um, then maybe we wouldn't still be talking about it maybe it wouldn't take you know now the NFL and all the professional sports now to wear orange to support every town and Moms on Demand and all these gun gun control, gun safety organizations to kind of pressure 
Senate and the Congress and Joe Biden, President Biden, that um, it's time to stop bullshitting on this issue because it could be you next. You know, it could be your family. It could be your graduating um, niece, daughter, cousin, nephew, godson. You know, I mean, granted, I know some of these obviously are targeted at certain people, but if any of these people who are in control of getting over their egos and voting this law into effect immediately, like all the other countries outside of America do, then we wouldn't probably still be hearing about so many mass shootings happening in in a short amount of time. Now, Philly's not a stranger to gunplay and and gun control, you know, gun issues. We've obviously been seeing an increase of that. Um, I personally think it comes down to when lockdown ended, you know, did a lot of people realize how much of their freedom that they missed? And did it not only make people think about their lives, but it did it make them feel like, you know, YOLO, I'm just going to go out there and do what I want because I don't know what's going to happen next. Um, did it heighten uh, the ingesting of social media to the point that people started to really believe in a delusional way that they had the power to change everything? You know, once they got out, you know, once all the bans were lifted and we were able to go out in public with or without a mask. Um, I just wonder if it really did something to certain people's psyche that we, that that kind of control over a virus that we couldn't uh, detect how bad it was getting. And that still has capabilities of running through a lot of people now, even, you know, we're finding our resurgence of, COVID cases now developing, whether or not people are hospitalized, I don't know. But I think a lot more people are getting it left and right because, um, you know, who knows, the vaccine probably doesn't last longer than you think. It probably doesn't work to some people at all. Um, All I know is I'd rather have sinus headaches and and occasional allergies that I normally have than be on a ventilator. So I just want to prevent that from happening. So And I think that it's become more than just about COVID. It became more about science. It became more about policy. And now you're just wondering if people just have any common sense. You know, now it's just an issue of, okay, we know that there's too much at stake when it comes to politics and gun control, but what is the end all what is the end game for us as a human as a human race, you know? I mean, do we constantly have to duck bullets for the rest of our lives that don't need to be there? You know, do we constantly have to worry about, you know, literally the day we leave out of our house that that could be our last day for real, you know? Because someone just decided they'd had enough and they just feel like popping off. Now, mind you, some of the random stuff that happens sometimes are just, unfortunately people just being reckless. But clearly what happened in, in Philly um, over the weekend after about 11, 11 o'clock or so, I think right after uh, the Roots picnic wrapped up Saturday night, I think that, um, and Sunday night, sorry, day two. Um, I think that Saturday night was a lot of people in different parts of the city at different events. And unfortunately, some people with some kind of a beef maybe could a neighborhood beef had an opportunity to pop off at each other and unfortunately caught up a lot of people in the process and apparently from when I last looked at Twitter they did catch both of these suspects now I don't know if there's more involved sound like a lot of confusion that happened so who knows if there's another person involved who knows if it was a misunderstanding that got out of control from something else but the point is, too many people were hurt. Too many people are probably still in the hospital now that weren't that, unfort- that fortunately did not die. But who knows? Someone might be paralyzed as of tonight. You know, someone uh, might take a long time in rehab now, as opposed to being able to be perfectly healthy and walking um, t- two nights ago. So the theme of being grateful today couldn't have rung more true as you begin a work week and you get through a regular Monday, whether you're working from home or in the office, or even just enjoying your vacation, you have to thank God every day that you are not one of these people just coming out the hospital tonight. 
or just getting the news that someone you know and love got shot. Um, I know it's going to take more than the current displays of solidarity, but, you know, the people that have continued to fight this since back in Columbine days and, and, and Parkland and, and now Uvalde, it's becoming um, an epidemic that needs to be it needs to be remedied. It, it needs to be taken care of to the point where there's less and less of it happening. Because at the end of the day, a lot of these people don't really need to be shooting more than, <laughs> you know, a couple of people. If you have beef with someone, that's that's their problem. That shouldn't be everybody else who's just innocently walking across the street's problem. You got beef with someone, you should just square up like a normal person and just battle it out on the fist you know and I get it you know a gun is more powerful a gun is more final but there's going to be a point where everyone's going to be tired of looking sus because they have they have a gun and they don't choose to use it the way that these reckless and hateful brainwashed domestic terrorists and gang members and you know disgruntled employees do um everyone has a choice in life and I think life is basically precious and these types of situations that are developing all over Philly as well as other parts of the world um, it's it's a sickness it definitely is a, a, a mentality that needs to die because it's not really helping anybody um feel any less or more anxious than they already did once we were out of um lockdown and you know the job market started becoming questionable whether or not you you were able to get work you know you left your job whatever a lot of things mentally have have put it has has created a burden for some of us whether or not nothing's changed on your end personally but things have if that makes any sense i mean that there, this is their perspective and the general way of coping in this kind of day and age where anything like this can randomly randomly happen and pop off anywhere, it just makes you realize how lucky you really are. And you should really be thankful no matter how uninteresting or busy um, your life is, you have a life, you know, and that is a blessing. Um, You know, I get down in the dumps of myself. You know, I know that there are certain things I wish I would be doing right now in my life. I know I have some regrets, unfortunately, that I could have, you know, helped myself out career wise. But, you know, it's 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 when you hear stuff like this constantly happening and it's happening and being reported, it seems like every little hour there's another shooting, there's another killing. There's just a lot of another random, horrible, violent act that could easily been prevented. And the fact that now that all this aftermath is coming out from Uvalde, Texas, and how the the sheriff and some of these people are not taking any accountability for what so obviously was poorly handled and arresting the mothers who did choose to speak out about how they felt like they weren't being looked after or protected or their children were. And the fact that they even jailed one woman who recently spoke out about what they felt was wrong just shows you how slowly but surely there's still there's still this need to want to silence everyone who tells the truth you know and i and i don't know why that's starting to seep into a lot of some of these states and and honestly again i could go back to saying it comes down to the administration before now but you know none of the guys in politics are ever really going to get it right because they will never understand that pain um, firsthand um, because they're not doing anything to stop it and because they're not the ones who are in a position of power to do so. So they'll never relate to the common man who has to lose a family member every other day. So I'm not expecting anything different from the administrations. I just know that that mentality didn't seem to be so front and center until these last um four years so I just want to say that in day and age where we all should know better now with some of the way that 
some of these certain states are trying to govern people and brainwash people and pass laws that make absolutely no sense, but have been masked to look at taking charge and taking control when it's really just mind control and um, white supremacy and um, eliminating any kind of different culture uh, because it creates, you know, conflict amongst other people, which is bullshit. Because honestly, if you really thought about it, everybody in this world is a little bit of everybody else. And I hate to say it, but what you're you're trying to do in creating this general mental cleanse of the other is going to eventually bite you back in the face because you're going to be finding out you're ex- <laughs> you're trying to extinguish a race that you're probably most likely part of. So you're trying to undo yourself and that will never work no matter how much of a bill you pass. There's just humanity constantly evolves no matter what. So you can write all the laws you want, you can block and kill people, but too many seeds have been planted. Um, And that's unfortunately for the good and for the bad part of humanity. So we continue to go out there and eat our own. So all I have to say is mentally, we are definitely fighting um, a losing battle. And I just pray that eventually at some point we all just stop trying to fight each other and just realize that we just got to start working on ourselves and just stop being mad at the world because we can't control all the change. You know, we can't control how fast, you know, humanity develops new ways and new strategies and new people. You know, we we're constantly creating and, and honestly, There's nothing you can do to stop the constant evolving of of people, you know, whether it be in knowledge, whether it be in race, whether it be in um, bloodlines. I mean, it's, it's too late. You know, we're at this point now where this is what we've all learned in our history books until we stop wanting to know about that, too, um, that we all came from one particular area and it evolved and it grew out from there and for those who are currently on this earth who refuse to believe that I hate to tell you but it's happening no matter what you do you know you can kill every person you think looks different than you but they've already reproduced or passed on a gene to someone else so all we can do is either keep to ourselves (laughs) and leave each other alone you know Or just accept the inevitable and don't make it an issue. You know, don't make it something that you feel you have to do. God doesn't need anybody's help. And then whatever God you serve that makes you want to kill people, they don't need your help either. But yet we constantly have such an ego as a human race to feel like we have to do something to control things. And the universe will always pop back and say, no, you don't. No, you can't. You know, you have to just sit and wait. Wait for it to find its own way through. And not saying it's wrong for anybody who's an activist and does everything in a positive light, but I'm saying that at some point, you're going to realize that you're fighting against something that will always take over no matter what you do. You know, there's a force out there that is just knows a lot more, works a lot harder than you, that is out of your control. Sorry. All right, moving on from that. Um, as a fan of sports radio, I only really got into it because I loved listening to Mike Missinelli. And last week was a shocking revelation that he was signing off on his last show last Monday, and it turned out he did uh, choose to leave as opposed to... Or maybe, who knows, maybe it happened over the weekend and he just decided to announce it on Monday but of last week but he did announce um, around the four o'clock hour that it was his last show I didn't know if he was going to either at least wait it out for the week but maybe it was one of those things that became effective you know Tuesday morning 
or maybe it was something he just decided that meant makes sense for him to deal with it because he didn't want to feel um, the inevitable footsteps, you know, telling him it's time to go. Maybe he wanted to do it his way. But I, as a fan of his, I have always loved listening to him, his snark, his sarcasm, his daddy structure in the sense that, you know, this is the way things are supposed to be like my dad. And yet at the same time, a passionate sports writer, sports enthusiast, purist when it comes to food. Um, and a man that always really honestly told it like it is and had a way of wording it in such a way that people couldn't really argue it, even though they tried. Um, but they don't realize how much of a, a researcher and an analytics, analytical mind that he was in Mike Missinelli. And he was also someone who I adored simply because I know he can't help himself. But I also know that sometimes I disagreed with him as much as anybody else. I never thought everything he said was, was true or right. But I respected the fact that he was one of the few that would actually take the time to research things and wouldn't just pop ignorant um, stories out. He would give his opinion, which sometimes was ignorant. But I do agree that he at least did the sports radio um, genre uh, justice as he went through 20 plus years of radio. Um, I personally think he should continue and do a podcast type of thing where it also involves all the things that he likes, like music, books, politics. He can say whatever he wants to say if he creates his own podcast and then also kind of make it like a multimedia thing and somehow inject his, the game show aspect because I know he liked doing the Philly Feud. So I think that's something he could do where it could be a, um, it, it could be an interactive um, type of model you know, with people like myself who are always fans of his regardless. So I hope that that's something he looks into after he kind of gets his bearings because he was clearly shaken up, which I'm, a lot of us were, especially because that day I was honestly listening to podcasts. I wasn't even listening to the show all the way because I knew that it was mostly going to be about how bad the Phillies had played that weekend and lost a lot of games. And I just didn't feel like listening to, you know, any more negative fodder about the about the Phillies because clearly we know that this is going to be another work in progress season and they just had a really good season this I mean this good uh shutout with the Angels this weekend but you know is it real we don't know but going back to Mike I I just want if he ever saw this I would always want to tell him thank you thank you for the years of being um a voice in radio that I always appreciated and you know, Tyrone being his producer was definitely, you know, the B to his A and vice versa. So they definitely were a match made in heaven in the sense that they both kind of, I used to tease when I called in and I would say him and Tyrone are like the two old men arguing on the porch about, you know, something, something political or not even political, but just like sports related, you know, two guys arguing on the bench or arguing on the porch, like that's bull crap. I don't care. I don't care. But at the same time, you know, agreeing to disagree. So I think that was the best matchup that could handle um, Mike's passion about what he believes. And I think Tyrone was the perfect um, complement to that. And as far as the female aspect, it was nice to see them decide to add Natalie at the time. And now Jen, because I think that it's always good to hear a woman's perspective, even though sometimes I argue they didn't let Jen talk enough. <laughs> um, whereas Natalie, I think, had a very bubbly personality that I think kind of snapped Mikey out of being so intense sometimes. And I think that was the point of when uh, the show went on, you know, on broadcast on NBC Philly. I think it was to give Mike another way of reporting and analyzing um, without kind of like a... Uh, a monotone delivery anymore like I think he needed that color um, and I think it was just a good look for the TV aspect of the show um, and I liked when he talked about food and they had their little side conversations and especially I think most people will appreciate now um, when we were all in quarantine and they still had to work and they still had to broadcast and there were times that a lot of the heated conversations about race and protests and everything came out and a lot of people showed their asses on the phones but I think that Mike handled it as classy as he could, even though I think he secretly was heartbroken that some of the people that called in and had their opinions the way they did, whether they be old school or lived up there on Northern Pennsylvania and have no idea about diversity, 
I, I just, I hope that he understands that that was important to interject during a time when sports really was an issue because we weren't watching sports for a while. You know, there was a, there was a whole shutdown of everything. Our entertainment was gone. And I think that that was an important season for Mike's career because I think it also made people really appreciate um, how he can deviate from sports and still make it about life and still kind of almost even tie it back into sports. I mean, we had to kind of do obviously a lot of revisionist history as, as callers and fans because there was nothing to talk about. But I appreciate that for him and I love Mike. And if he ever sees this, I love you, buddy. I hope to see you again on some platform because I think it's time that you investigate that, whether or not you're good at tech or anything like that, because I'm not either. But I think that's something that you need to do because you can really say what you want. And everyone knows you were opinionated. So I know you got more in the think tank. So work on that. But I love you. And thank you for Sports Radio all those years. Definitely. All right. Moving on. Um, all right. The Eagles um, are exciting, not only just because uh, of all the footage that came out, obviously, over the weekend of Devonta, Devonta's charity baseball game and, you know, playing against uh, Micah um, from the Cowboys, who's a local PA guy from Allentown area. And uh, it's good to know that Jalen Hurts was the one to shut that whole game down with a walk-off home run. It was good to know that A.J. Brown won the home run derby. It was good to know in general that that whole event um, showed a lot of the fans what chemistry they can provide on the on the football field once September rolls around. Now, I'm praying that now that they give them kind of like a longer break for actual training camp begins, that a lot of the guys... Um, take their conditioning seriously and I pray that by by preseason we can at least see most of the squad for like half a game or whatever and get to see what they can pop off um and I pray that as easy as they say the schedule will be I'm just excited knowing that there's another uh, professional wide receiver on the field now because I feel like um there's not going to be this high expectation and pressure on Quez or Greg Ward or Jalen Rager um, I think at this point, it's going to just be about how AJ and Devonta help each other out so that the other is open. And it's just up to Hertz to decide to be consistent with his throwing ability and break the habits that were holding him back last season. So I just wanted to add that just because I know eventually the co-ed edition, we're going to discuss the upcoming Eagles stuff and, and the fact that they moved around some front office personnel again which sounds already like a f bad move to me if it's going to be mostly analytic guys and not football guys but whatever we won't know until honestly the first half of the season and see how they're designating um play calling and whether or not Sirianni really uh did any adjustments to his style and whether or not he's play calling the most of the time or not I just hope all that becomes a little more clear as the season rolls and um yeah, so I'm just I I just wanted to interject that I was I'm happy to even be slightly optimistic about the Eagles this this time around and not as panicky or negative because I feel like you're kind of giving Jalen another first year chance and I feel like this time he knows what has been holding him back but I think he also knows that him um, spending some time practicing with Brady and learning from other quarterbacks and probably still working um, will help him uh, be a more complete quarterback hopefully as the year goes on so my love to the whole Eagles crew I'm excited because I see they're already talking mess already and I just hope to God it translates to wins more than losses so here's to fall of 2022 all right so and then Phillies being, like I said, on the hot streak is good, but I'm just a little concerned. I called into Tyrone today on the what they're calling the afternoon show on 97.5 Fanatic. I told him I was worried about Bryce's injury um, to his UCL or whatever that um, strain is that they're apparently um, allegedly giving him an injection that um, will not prevent him from being able to swing the bat as opposed to throwing hard from, from when he played right field. 
I still don't feel optimistic that he can do that all season. I still feel like even as a DH, he's pressing his luck a little bit to last the whole season on injections. I I feel like this is going to be kind of a throwback to when Deshaun, speaking of which, uh, could have gotten that surgery early when he was on the Eagles this last year and um, waited too long, and then he really hurt himself, and then he had to get surgery. So I'm just praying it doesn't develop into something like that for Bryce because we got him for a long time, and I would hate this to be one of those, you know, naysayer Bryce haters that didn't think he deserved all the money when it's not your money. Um, and there's obviously more issues with the Phillies than than that money was ever going to heal because no matter what, it was a good move to get Bryce. And the fact that he hit a grand slam yesterday should have been all the indication as to why they gave him that money. Now, mind you, a lot of stuff that Dombrowski probably wants to do, he can't do, obviously, because apparently now they're dipping into the luxury tax, but you have to pay the players that performed uh, consistently before this whole front office, office restructure. So again, just like the Eagles, you kind of just have to roll the dice. So I have no expectations about the Phillies for the playoffs. I don't think they're going to make it, but I think that's only just because, like I said, they've, they've lost too many. But again, they play like almost 200 freaking games. So any everything could change by like late August, September. So we'll never know. It's nothing even to talk about as much. It's just... I'm just concerned about Bryce. So I'm just praying that he doesn't put himself in a position he'll regret. So that's all about that. And sidebar, the reason why I even brought up Deshaun was because today he did he debuted his episode on I Am Athlete. And I was a little unnerved, actually. Um, with Shady being on the show now with Brandon Marshall um, and Pac-Man Jones now, it's just not the same as it was when, you know, uh, Fred Taylor and Channing were on there. But I understand, and an Ocho, but I understand that Brandon has to kind of, as they always keep saying, move the conversation forward. But I feel like with Shady and DJ in that episode, it just kind of made me sad to feel like they still, they still are kind of both immature in how they carry their opinions about how the Eagles treated them and all that stuff. But I, I think the one thing Shady can admit to say is that he... He knows that if, if it was up to Andy Reid, had he been there, he wouldn't have let him go. Um, Chip Kelly was a whole nother beast that obviously didn't relate to them. And then the Eagles office folded under him because they thought he was going to be, you know, the quarterback whisperer. And they made a huge mistake. And when he came back, DJ made the mistake of not getting the surgery that he desperately needed to even try to help Carson out. And the one thing I will say watching that episode, you should go check it out on YouTube, um, I Am Athlete. I think that DJ is not sure whether he wants to retire because I don't think he feels like he's had closure to prove why he's one of the best wide receivers. I think that his speed will never really obviously be the same, but I do think he's still a threat because the few times I've seen him play for the Raiders and for um, the Rams, I didn't understand why all of a sudden he kind of disappeared after those few plays that he did make. So I don't know if maybe what he thinks condition wise that he is and what the actual teams think of him, but there's some kind of disconnect there. And I feel like if he thinks he's still got it, then great. I think he should go to the Ravens if they need another wide receiver, because it would kind of be awesome to see him and Lamar, um, get a chip together especially because DJ is 35 and Lamar is younger than him but I think that that would pro probably be a good fit for DJ for his like his last his last hurrah um but I think some of these dudes got so much swag and so much attitude that it can kind of be a turnoff when they're not really proving results at the time that they're tooting their own horns I do agree in, in Hall of Fame kind of status. I do agree DJ is worthy, but no one as shady as the NFL was with T.O. I don't expect them to acknowledge Deshaun in the Hall of Fame status, but he's definitely a Hall of Famer eagle, you know, but that doesn't really mean anything to uh, Canton. But I think at the end of the day, I something still irks me when him and Shady kind of go off about 
revisionist stuff. I mean, Shane doesn't even want to admit that the two rings that he has, he didn't really earn. You know, um, he played, to me, he played his best after he left the Eagles in Buffalo. They just didn't go anywhere because Josh Allen wasn't fully developed or even there, I think, at the time. Well, he was there, but I don't think he was ready. And DJK has, again, I will side with him that he made a good point that he was never really with a quarterback that was consistent with him for longer than a couple seasons at a time, if not one. So he didn't even really get to experiment with Carson as long as he could have because of, you know, his injury. And I think that the problem with Washington was that whether or not he can brag about, you know, every time the Eagles played them, he burned them. And even when he was on the Bucks, that's great. But he also had a lot of hamstring pulls. He also had a lot of issues with maintaining um, his overall speed because of those injuries. And I guess someone like him that just knows primarily how to run, the one thing that he kind of tapped into during this episode too is that he wasn't even really aware that he wasn't running routes correctly, you know? And my whole thing is you may know how to do straight up and run, but the thing that Devonta Smith is, is very unique in that he does actually run routes correctly for the most part. And I, I think that Devontae, uh, Devontae Adams um, is another one who is pretty much a route running king. And that's important when you don't really understand or you know how to read your defender. And I think with, with uh, Shady and Nichek both, they both kind of just had blind natural talent and they just kind of went on that and just figured everybody else would just fall in line. And that may have worked at times, um, but I don't think in long, in long term, they play the way that the NFL truly acknowledges, you know, without the, the stats of how many touchdowns you got or how many yards you ran. You know, the consistent, productive plays are all they really care about. And the fact that you take someone as talented as Deshaun out of a game more than once, and then he didn't even stay on the team that ended up winning the Super Bowl, it's like, well, I got nothing for you, you know? The NFL is, what have you done for me lately, league? And I think what he's not going to really be comfortable ever trial, probably ever admitting is that he should have known better about a lot of things. You know, he should have took the time to really refine his skills when he had the opportunity in his height of his heyday. But I think because he came from, you know, a, a mind frame, always bigging yourself up regardless, which it's not even that that gets me. I understand why he's like that. I understand that every black man should, you know, toot their own horn. But I, I just think that sometimes there's a part where, and I'm going to say the word, you should humble yourself to the point where you should accept the fact that when it's over, it's over, you know, and the NFL won't give you any, um, they won't throw you a bone all the time. So I just find it really annoying that someone who is so intelligent and so, um, as far as being a player can honestly come down as so, come off as so, I don't know, reckless and I want to say arrogant, but I feel like he can afford, DJ can be afford to be arrogant. I think Shady, I hated the way he carried the ball. I love the way he ran, but I hated the way he held the ball while he ran. Um, I don't think he really understood how tucking it was important, Um, but he was so fast and he was so shifty that that's why no one ever questioned it. But it was annoying to watch at times because I think that sometimes if he did lose the ball, that was basically the reason why. Deshaun too. I mean, he had he had he had great speed, but how many times is everyone going to exactly hit you where your where your stride is going deep? You know, if you're covered, or if they don't get they just don't get the ball to you. Sometimes you have to learn ways to shake the defender before you get the ball. You know, there it is a skill, and I understand now why you know To was such a stickler about details about his game. So that so much so that I think people still think the fact that he wants to play now, even in this fan controlled league thing, it just proves to you that he knew that his skill set is rare in the sense that no matter how old he is, he still remembers how to get to point A to point B and still catch the ball as opposed to just running. You know, there is a skill in it. So and lastly, I'll just say however you choose to end each day just end it with a prayer of thanks end it with a a slight meditation 
I'm having to tell myself to remember to stretch, drink lots of water, and just in general, just be thankful. Because honestly, if there's nothing that means more than anything, is that tomorrow is never promised is not a lie. And not that it ever was, but it truly isn't. So as I close, I say thank you if you were still listening. Thank you if you were. Thank you if you weren't. And uh, yeah, hopefully when Co-Ed Edition comes back later this week, we can discuss further exactly what is going on um, with our Phillies. And then also I wanted to get Ed's opinion actually about the whole Deshaun episode because I really thought it kind of a little bit of revisionist history there with what he was discussing with Brandon Marshall. But anyway, thanks for listening. That was most of my rants. And uh, yeah. Oh, also Sixers, but we'll talk a little bit more next. I already went over my 30 minutes. Sorry. Either way, thanks for listening. Birds of a Feather, AJ the Suburban Princess. Good night.